Hi guys and welcome to our channel Only in Australia where you can find travel, adventure, food and culture that is unique to Australia's shores. Hi guys and welcome to Sovereign Hill in Ballarat in Victoria. Uh, this place is a living museum. It's a tribute to the 1850s and Australia's gold mining history and a lot of the town folk every day get dressed up in period costume and interact with the public as you come through. This place is the size of a small suburb inside a town and it is absolutely amazing. It's one of my favourite places to come and one of the best museums in the world. We're about to go through the doors in the information centre and we're about to step back in time. Sovereign Hill, let's go. So we're just going up to the admissions area now and we'll just check out uh, the prices for admission. That's and Hill? Yes, it is. And here we go. So uh, adults are $57 um, and a concession is forty five sixty. A child's ticket is from five years to 15 and that's twenty five sixty. Um, you can also get family tickets, and that is for two adults and up to four children, and that's $144. And a single adult uh, with up to three children uh, costs $103. Um, you can come in on the second day as well on these tickets, so you can come twice. So we're just going through the souvenir shop, and... Mm. Uh, there's lots of things here that they've made to uh, look like they're from the 1850s. So lots of chocolate wrapped up as gold and things from that period. It's pretty good. Okay, so we're about to go on a journey through Australia's first really successful gold digging. It's in the Victorian gold fields, which still hold massive amounts of gold today. I'm going to see where the uh, miners live. They lived in there was a Chinese end to this village and a non-Chinese end to the village and yeah, we're going to learn a bit about how the two groups interacted and sometimes didn't interact and the runnings of a town that was based on gold and uh, yeah, we're going to go down into the museum and then straight outside into the exhibit we're going to see lots of characters walking around in period costume interacting with us um, in the days of many, many years ago Okay, this is level one of the um, exhibition centre, and there are lots of videos running about some of the characters that came to live here in Sovereign Hill, and some of the um, things that happened to them on the way. And it sounds like it was not a good trip to come out here, and then sometimes even harsher livings when you got here, but that chance to make it big in a short time is what drove a lot of people for many years. Okay, we're just heading up to the diggings now, and this is where we'll see the miners' tent accommodation. And Dad, you can, can see... We, Dad, can we get on this? We can't go on that stagecoach because it left a hundred and something years ago. Um, and you can see here the fares are in pounds, see? So Australia's a dollar country. Now, back then it was in pounds, very British. And, yeah, coaches to Geelong, to Melbourne, two pounds is a lot of money. And... Some of these people came here on £20 a year for wages. Some of the police and shopkeepers and things like that. So the people that weren't business people uh, with their own business or weren't miners often got very limited money. Let's go. Look! Yeah. Is that one? Ethan's excited because he wants to catch a stagecoach. He asked me, can I catch the one on the poster? And I said... No, it left over a hundred years ago, but here comes one now, and we'll go on it a little later. Let's have a look. Oh, beautiful Clydesdale horse. Okay, Ethan has found a gold panning conveyor belt, which he's trying to turn, and as you can see, it pulls the uh, 
pebbles and grit from the bottom of the stream and you can sift through it and see if there's any gold and down there people are using pans and they're panning for gold. So there's a bit of a cross between the modern era and the old times. This is exactly what they did. They panned for gold. And many people found gold here. Lots of people dug it up in their own mind, but most a lot of it was found in the stream. Hey, and this is the side of the National School, which is just a tent. So it's not even the side of the classroom, it's just a tent right next to the gold activity. And you can see here the first signs of dissent, which led to the Eureka Stockade. Australia has never had a revolution, we've never had a civil war. They're a very peaceful country, but they felt oppressed by the mining seas and they rose up against it. And yeah, there was a standoff with the British troops and the miners. And uh, which resulted in the Eureka Stockade. Okay, we're about to go down into the Chinese camp. So they have their own quarter here uh, where they mostly just live together and um, other miners live in similar diggings just away. Um, similar quarters, sorry. Um, let's go down and you can see these old canvas tents and that's how they live. You can see they've got two skins on the tent, so an outside skin and an inside skin, so a bit of shade, maybe keeping it a little bit more cool, wooden floor. They would have had to deal with slotting. Okay, and like any time in Australia, uh, ingenuity comes to the forefront and necessity is the mother of invention. And you can see here they've made like a aquifer to make the water come down and they can strain the um, grit from the bottom of the stream in these slats and catch any gold because the gold's heavy it won't fall down it'll get caught there so it's a pumping system it's really really clever and it's a good way that back then they could get more gold um, without having to do everything so manually Okay, hey, we're going to go into the general store and there's some wanted posters here. Frederick, someone, wanted for something, no photos, but um, yeah, it's really interesting the way they did things. Okay, we're in the general store and you can see some of the things that they sold back then. And Victoria gets cold. Mama, it's 16 degrees again? today, and they would have had hats Mama, and gloves. Mama, try this again. Yeah, just wait a moment, Inky. No, and no TV, no radio, yeah, yeah. musical instruments, yeah, yeah. and wooden no, fans. There's no AC here, no spinning fans. Yeah. To buy a wooden hand yeah. fan, bags, Mama, drink flasks. Mama, what try? Okay, and here you can see some gold pans. Obviously important. Okay, in this place. Some things which would have been made here and some brought from outside. We're going to look for some gold at the end, but we don't be getting wet this now. And lots and lots of things that you just would have needed at that time. And if you had children here, there's no real plastic toys, so you bought things like this. Wooden toys. And look at this one. Rummy, you can see there the gold line. Ethan's found some of the wooden toys, which he's finding quite interesting. Um, over there you can see the gold license, you could buy it in the shop. One and that was pound. one of the things that was so expensive and worried everyone. And here you can see people could buy a firearm and the um, powder and shot. So you had to load these things down the barrel with a ball bearing and gunpowder. Okay, and behind me is the Red Hill Mining Company, and under this site today, they're still mining for gold, and these guys found one of the biggest nuggets in history. So, this place has a strong history of uh, gold and success, and also failure. People went home totally penniless. Daddy, can we follow the footprints now? Yeah, we'll go up this way, let's go.
And here you can see there was a well behind this, so they're welling for water, and some sort of grinding wheel, probably for wheat and making their own food. It is. Let's just wait, hun. Okay, so we've come up the hill, we've just seen, this is more the industrial end of town. There's a grinding wheel for wheat back there, a well. This is the church. Um, and this is the hotel, the old hotel. Thankfully staying here, you don't have to stay here. There's a much newer one out the front that looks from the period time. And there's a Ballarat Times, a newspaper. So this place was really set up. Now, once we separated the mercury, the gold sitting in that retort, we would take the gold out and we place it into one of these. This is a crucible. Now, we will add a flux pad, which is potash or borax, they use a bead of the two, and the impurities in the gold are lined as they will put the crust. And when we pour the gold, to its current travel intake, so travellers that are coming here, and there are lots of signs springing up, like this one, and sometimes not quite as polite, with pictures of how not to use a restroom, um, but this one says times for Chinese speaking visitors, so they've obviously got uh, interpreters that interpret how the yeah, gold we have is Chinese guides. Guides, great. They're dressed in period costume. Really? Yep, and they take them on the mines as well. Fantastic. So, so we do three, but sometimes we have to do extra Chinese schools because there's more um, tourists. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, a lot of fun. Fantastic. Awesome. Okay, and we're in the candy shop and they're making candy. So they're kneading a huge ball of candy. Yeah. 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 Okay, so Cascas, we're at a working mine now, aren't we? The NC here, the machinery, all moving, and yeah, look. It's quite amazing, they've still got part of this all working, and yeah. You see the little train carriages over there, sort of rough and boring, on the side. Amazing. Okay, so we're in the main street now, of Sovereign Hill. You can see everything from stagecoach, ticket shops, shoemakers, saddlery, and there's a post office somewhere. Let's go. So this is a gentleman's department. than you'll ever see in your miserable old life. You're not going to ruin my mood today. I'm buying a ring for my bride. Good day to your chum. 
How can any sense of order be brought to a society in which everyone, everyone is preoccupied with his own rapid enrichment? I tell you all, ladies and gentlemen, go! One of the greatest curses which we have, we have been afflicted. I mean, you working classes should not run away after fighting ghosts. Help this go to the working class! Okay, and we're up here at the top end of town, and this is a fire station. And as you can see, horse-drawn fire engine or fire carriage where the hose is wrapped around and yeah and in the back there the fire helmets and fire suits from the 1800s wow and this is where the firemen sat and spent their time and you can see the manual pump to pump the water like this amazing and over the other way there is an undertaker and builder because people died here in the um, pumps of dying and the hard living conditions. And remember, look, this is a pump. This one, they pump this and pump the water out there. So they had to tow that there as well. Because it's a pump, so it's where, where they got the water out when they um, made it. People forget Australia wasn't a country until 1901. This place was around in the 1850s. And so Victoria was a, a separate kind of entity to other parts of Australia. Um, and yeah, and uh, the British flag soared over it and other areas as well. And you can see, we were just noticing the street light and how they would have been either candle or gas back then. At the moment. The amazing voltage batteries in three, two, one, strap counting. One banana, two bananas. Woo! Give me two. Super Eric, you must. What are you doing, Ethy? Are you panning? Who brought the panning today? Gemas banget sih si Ihan. Nasi sis gak ada lolly kok. Have you found any gold? Thank you for watching Only in Australia's Sovereign Hill video. Uh, we hope you've really enjoyed it. It's a great thing and we want you to come and have a look at this great museum. Uh, thank you and please subscribe to our channel and log on for more videos. Thank you. Bye. Thank you guys for watching our video. We hope you've enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe and share to keep us making more videos. Thank you. <laughs>